Speaking of court. Oh, here it is. Yep. Jesse Smollett takes a stand. Details gay bathhouse ex- escapades with Nigerian brother. <laughs> oh, boy. <laughs> Ooh, la, la. Could you imagine the scent? So he's trying to say. I don't want to. So he says <laughs> it's all over a breakup. He's trying, babe. <laughs> That's what he's trying to say. Listen, we all know the story, right? The alleged <laughs> yeah. story. Wait, I'll say which one because there's from a, six from, or seven. From January, <laughs> January 30th. 2019 or whatever date it was <laughs> Jesse Smollett the quote unquote actor <laughs> accused of uh, perpetrating a hoax a hate hoax and lying to police about it took to the witness yeah it is interesting in the police report he told them it was two white people mm-hmm. so did the Nigerian brothers have to put on white face <laughs> I don't know. right I mean <laughs> so maybe they were wearing masks <laughs> so this was he took to the stand today to defend himself during the trial against himself. Smollett claimed that he originally met uh, Ambiambola Asanadera. Okay, you know, one of the brothers. <laughs> yes. Now a witness for the prosecution at, at a Chicago nightclub. And that the pair then wound up together in uh, the Steamworks, a bathhouse in Chicago's Boys Town neighborhood. Boys Town? Uh, Boys Town. Ew. Changed the name of that neighborhood. Uh, uh, uh. That's nasty. So he said today, quote, we were in the club. You go and you go to the bathroom, you go to the stall, do a bump, do a bump, <laughs> and then just kind of keep going in. Oh, and then he went into the bathhouse. You talking about cocaine? I, I guess so. I hope so. <laughs> it's the only time I'm hoping that someone's talking about Seriously. coke. Seriously. Ah, Smollett. Was uh, yeah, he was referencing cocaine. He was uh, hmm. that uh, that preceded the uh, the encounter of adult times. Cocaine. That Smollett said that the pair didn't have uh, intercourse, but we did more drugs and made out, <laughs> and uh, that there was touching and things like that on that night. I touch him. The you Nigerian think, one. You think he was getting aroused in the uh, in the witness chair? <laughs> I don't know. Do you think, babe? What do you think? Do you think it was uh, chubbing up? Is I think what it's called. I don't, I don't know. You think that's what it's called? Chubbing up. Chubbing up. Uh, uh, I have no clue. The defense, Smollett, <laughs> has claimed that the attack on Smollett was real, and was uh, precipitated by uh, the brothers wanting to uh, be hired as Smollett's security guard. Yeah, that's a great way to get hired. <laughs> I swear to God, this story just keeps taking different but turns. It's- so, yeah, what's up, babe? What was the point? What was the point? Of him being on stand? Oh, I he, he just wanted to say that uh he was uh that he uh, he was trying to say that uh, he knew them, I guess. And mm-hmm. he and he touched them in the bathhouse in the after, bath. after but drugs. That like yeah. totally goes uh, against his own defense. Why would he even get on the stand? Like I I would not I would I would walk I, up out of the behind the table in the courtroom instead of walking to the stand, I would walk right to the DA's office. Be like, "Okay, let's plead a deal." Okay? Seriously? Okay, I plead. I plead guilty. What? What? Let's work out a deal. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, I wasted all your money. Uh, this is homemade sin guilt right here. Boy. The the, uh, the uh, that sound like a bad movie. Prosecutors claim that I, I can't wait to see this movie. <laughs> I wonder if Jesse Smollett will play oh Jesse my Smollett. God. <laughs> It'd probably be the only gig you can get. <laughs> Prosecutors, they claim that the Smollett had a motive to perpetrate the hate hoax since he was upset with how the studio that uh, he was working with, with that Empire show, mm-hmm. handled his uh, hate mail that they thought that he wrote. <laughs> his left-handed <laughs> yeah, hate mail. Yeah, it looks like his, his handwriting lefty. <laughs> feeling that they didn't stand up for him enough. Wah. <laughs> Chris, Chris, and your puns. They even see that they even uh, tried to get a uh, what's it called? They tried to uh, make this a mistrial too the other day. How's for that? what? Uh, Judge James Lynn denied a motion for a mistrial on the part of the defense in Jesse Smollett hoax case, telling the defense attorneys, "I'm stunned that he would consider a mistrial." So Tamara Walker, all right, check this out. She's an attorney for the defense, uh, Smollett. Yeah, and she accused the judge, Judge Lynn, of physically threatening her during a sidebar. You know, like when they call, "Hey, uh, 
Mm-hmm. Yeah, counsel, let, let, please approach yes. the bench. Yeah. Which the judge categorically denies. So according to uh, CBS Chicago, uh, Irv Miller, an in-house legal analyst of theirs, said, uh, quote, never seen it happen. This is a first even for me. I've been doing this a long time, but I've never seen an attorney accuse a judge of doing anything such as an attorney announced in court that occurred in Judge Lynn. So Smollett, you're right, right, been charged with lying to police, blah, blah, blah. But check this out. So she says to the judge, you threatened me because you lunged at me. <laughs> the judge goes, what? It's just like a huge diet. What well, like happened? That. And yes, you lunged at me. I want a mistrial. Oh, my God. Come again, says the judge, <laughs> paraphrasing. Just crazy. The judge goes, no, we are not ruling this a mistrial because they are. Uh, oh, do you have any witnesses of this? Yeah. No. OK, w- what did I do? You lunged. OK, no mistrial. Moving forward. <laughs> she then starts crying. The lawyer. Oh, boy. OK. And goes home with her mommy who's in the courtroom Get that. no i am telling you you're making oh, this I I am, I am not. oh this is on tape because this is they real. Were, yes yeah. it's, all, it's all audio oh, right my goodness Mm-mm-mm. so oh. yeah mm. first of all Mm-mm-mm. why would you hire a lawyer that brings their mommy to court <laughs> and cries in court for being it quote, unquote, accuses a federal uh, freaking judge yeah. of violence oh this just seems like mm. Good. <laughs> this guy's going to jail. Oh yeah. Okay. Just if he on wasn't this, before just, he is now. <laughs> like I thought maybe he was just going to get probation, mm-hmm. but now no. because of this, what the lawyers are trying to pull, the judge is like, okay, you're done. Okay. <laughs> you want to see a lunge? You're about to see one. It may be tomorrow. Jesse, you're going to be doing a lot of lunges. Your acting ain't that good. So it's not the first mm-hmm. time though. He's a uh, he's been in legal troubles. <laughs> Did you know that he was in the Mighty Ducks? No. Oh, yeah. God. yeah. Mm-hmm. Oh, yep. He was in the Mighty Ducks. Well, yeah. he was in uh North. Remember North? No. Yeah, Empire. Nobody watches either. The uh, only one I've even heard of out of all this is the the first one. Yeah. So uh, this he's the son of uh, Joel and Janet. Uh, oh, he, he's got the uh, he's got what's it called the uh, three brothers, two sisters, right? Jake, Jockey, JoJo, Journey, yeah. and Jazz, and mom and dad is Joel and Janet. Yeah, his his dad's a white guy. That's the, so precious. You know what I mean? The guy, he, the J names. I mean, not yeah. the fact that his dad was white. I knew he was mixed. Okay, boom, boom. But look at this. Let's go down to a personal life. Let's go down <laughs> a little bit to the filmography. It's a very short list. Legal <laughs> issues in two thousand seven. According to the Los Angeles City Attorney's Office, Smollett pleaded no contest to providing false information to law enforcement, right, in a 2007 misdemeanor case uh, resulting from a DUI stop in which Smollett gave police a false name and signed his brother's name on the summons. Oh, damn. Promising to appear in court. Freaking savage. Mm -hmm. Smollett also pleaded no contest to driving with a blood alcohol level uh, over the legal limits and driving without a valid driver's license. Ooh, it was sentenced to a fine. His brother, two though. years in probation. <laughs> but yeah, it's crazy. The guy lied. He's like, yeah, I'm not. No, here's my name. It's my brother. <laughs> what a jerk. I mean, seriously. Like, what if his brother, then his brother would get the warrant for not yeah. showing up for court. Well, okay. Yeah. <laughs> if I was his brother, I'd be the one jumping him after he left the subway in Chicago. So this guy's just a third pig. I, I really do think they're going to make an example out of him, and I think they should. And I think at least he should get some, some jail time. I don't think he's going to get anything significant. Well, let's look into some of these fake hate crimes, okay, okay. and what some people got. All right. I pulled up some of these uh, these fake hate crimes. Babe, remember we did this one? This former NFL player, yeah, and his, uh, arrested for staging the fake hate crime at his uh, at his restaurant or whatever yeah. his bar. He, he wrote wonder, the N word anywhere, everywhere. I wonder what happened to him. Well, you want to know what happened to him? Yeah. Hmm. Okay, so so this fake hate crime, <laughs> crazy. It's <Right>. crazy. <laughs> so the former NFL player who was arrested. This was uh this was this was in. It was in 2019. This was right after, uh, a couple months after Jesse Smollett. Yeah. All right. So this was like, I think in August of 2019. He kind of got lucky. He got overshadowed a little by the Jesse thing because I vaguely remember us talking about this. So the, he was, uh, he was arrested. 
after allegedly staging a uh, fake hate crime by damaging property and painting racial slurs at his local business in Georgia. It was in uh, Gwinnett County. And the Gwinnett County police say that uh, Adon Kaufman okay, created premeditated uh, created a premeditated plan to get money from his insurance company. It's always just about money with you. You oh, know course. what I mean? Like Jesse Smollett, he wanted more fame. Wanted oh, yeah. more money. He wanted the mm-hmm. notoriety. Allegedly. We'll find out tomorrow maybe <laughs> when the judge goes like this. Okay, here's my lunch. Well, it really doesn't make sense on either. I mean, Gwinnett County, I used to live near there. It's, it's primarily African-American. But it's like he took the Jesse Smollett playbook, this guy. Mm-hmm. Photos from law enforcement appear to show racial slurs, swastika, and MAGA spray painted in different parts of the establishment why the maga <laughs> because they I mean, just well, you know because of the media yeah because of the media and their lies but it didn't work for jesse <laughs> Girl, he got caught by the night the night handy guy that's how he got caught so mm-hmm. the 31 year old and by the way he, he never actually played an nfl game he just uh, was signed he was just probably practice team. Yeah, yeah. He was the he was the beat up dog. He warmed the bench. I wouldn't mind. You still get paid. Like pay good Damn money. Right. Damn right. Pay. And you don't get your your knees jacked up. <laughs> so the thirty one year old at the time has been charged with a false report of a crime, insurance fraud, and concealing a license plate. And <laughs> since he has been released, that's right. They had it all on surveillance mm-hmm. from the outside security cameras. Yep. Oh yeah. Yeah. They they had it all on camera. Him going in and out. Oops. According to the uh, detailed uh, statement by police officers, uh, they responded to a report of a burglary at the uh, Create and Bake restaurant <laughs> and Kaufman's Creamery. Oh, my God. Mm-hmm. The person who reported the burglary said someone was, you know what? I, for, I think it was him. He was calling from a pay phone, <laughs> if I remember correctly. I think he story. was, yeah. Well, I just wonder where he found a pay phone in 2019. Yeah, that's got to be great where he's like disguising <laughs> a voice. Hey, yeah. I, I see like a burglary at the creamery. Who burgles a creamery? Uh, the person <laughs> who reported the burglary said someone was damaging the businesses. According to a statement. Oh, yeah, it wasn't him that called. That's right. That was a different story. Someone. Okay, that's what it was. Someone saw what was going on. Mm-hmm. And they're like, I think, I think the place is getting robbed. Mm-hmm. But it was the guy. It was the owner in there. So he was just trying to be slick and get in and out and then call the insurance, probably. Because the guy that called said that the suspect was driving a black Chevrolet Silverado with no license plate. Guess who has a black Chevrolet (laughs) Chevrolet Silverado with no license plate? Could have rented a car, Uber. Something. Something. (laughs) Statement said officers arrived in the area and found the truck leaving the shopping center, realized that the driver was Kaufman, and later learned that he was the owner of the business. (laughs) <laughs> Kaufman told police, though, that he noticed that equipment was missing and damaged earlier in the day, but did not call 911, but did call his insurance company mm. to report the incident. Mm. Yeah, according to the uh, county's uh, statement, officers uh, and the lead detective learned uh, during the course of the investigation that the, uh, the damage to the business did not occur earlier in the day and uh, refuting Kaufman's statement. So, yeah. Just want to know where his neck went. Uh, inside the business, cops said that the smell of spray paint was very fresh. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe even got a little high. Mm. Uh, and the black paint appeared wet. <laughs> it was still wet when officers touched it. Mm-hmm. People. Uh, the statement also uh, details that the police found cut wires, vandalized upholstery, and damaged video surveillance system. Oh, of course they took out the surveillance system. <laughs> they also claimed to find a uh, pry marks on the bri- uh, on the business's back door. At least he was smart enough to try and make it look mm-hmm. like a forced mm-hmm. entry anyway. <laughs> so uh, the county statement said that the law enforcement searched the truck. Uh, never played a regular season. I, I, I want to know, what did this ever go to trial? Chris said something earlier about five years probation. Yeah, yeah, you know what? I bet he got probation. I think, I, I mean, that's what he was referring to. Let me just uh, pull this up just to make sure. Dun, dun, dun. Oh, he's got a Wikipedia. Oh, God. Of course he does. <laughs> okay. Dun, dun, dun. Uh, <laughs> professional. What? Legal issues. Here we go. Uh, since the insurance fraud incident, Kaufman has also been arrested for aggravated assault, a robbery. Oh, wow. Okay. Uh, Kaufman claimed that he had noticed a damage. Dun, dun, dun. Kaufman included uh, false release reporting. 
Uh, it was September of 2019. He was arrested. Uh, discovered the truck also contained multiple televisions. Oh, yeah, his truck had some of the yeah, TVs. Yeah, he, he took the TVs. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I forgot about that one. <laughs> Wait, uh, his TV? Yeah, he, he yeah. stole his he stole TVs. His own it, 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 it said it was, it was stolen. Oh, my God. Yeah. They pulled him over. <laughs> yeah. In his own vehicle. Oh, that's right. That's right. Uh, oh, Chris said it was just a guess. Yeah. Uh, I, I can't even find out what. Well, if it's 2019, and I mean, he might still be battling it in court. They, yeah, they may be. not have sentenced right, him. Right, could have been. I mean, look at Jesse; he's just now getting with COVID and all that. How about this one? Do you guys remember Amari Allen? Why does that sound familiar? That's the one when she was bullied. Very good, babe. Yeah. babe. You got a good memory, man. <laughs> <laughs> this was uh, the I girl let, that, uh, yeah, uh, yeah. Amari Allen claimed that the three white boys held her down and cut her ugly, nappy dreadlocks quote-unquote, in a uh, playground at Virginia Private Christian School. This was, uh, wow, this, I think this was also 2019. Yeah, mm -hmm. September 30th, 2019. Yeah. Wow. Because it was about the same time. It's about the same time. Mm-hmm. Man. And uh, either with that little, what, the little, I don't know, when they was across the east saying that they were making fun of him because mm -hmm. of his height yeah. and stuff. Yeah. So a, a week later, she admitted to making the story up, but media went crazy with this one. Media well, was sure. like this. Mm -hmm. Her family apologized and asked for forgiveness. Of course, I love forgiving. But the 12-year-old straight-A student, okay, a violin player, said that while telling uh, her that uh, she should not have been born, one of the boys covered her mouth, another held her head, and the third took scissors and cut her locks. Uh, that was her claim. <laughs> she, uh, she said that the incident occurred at the Emanuel Christian School in Springfield, Northern Virginia, where tuition is about 12, 12 grand a year. Mm. Uh, I, I, you know, I do remember that one because of the private school thing. I went to Catholic parochial schools. There's like 300 people in the whole school. I mean, it's not a public school where there's 30,000. The school shuttered its Facebook and Instagram account. As it said, it would uh, it would investigate at the time. Mm -hmm. In a statement emailed, uh, they said, uh, uh, head of school, Stephen Danish, said, uh, we can now confirm that the student was, uh, the student who accused three of her classmates of assault has acknowledged that the allegations were false. Yeah. Why even bother? Attention. What was she hoping to get? Attention. Uh, in an interview with the local news station, the 12-year-old wept as she described as the assault. Yeah, I remember that when we played that. Uh, she sometimes I think I don't deserve to be there at a Christian school and everything, and that I'm ugly. Yeah, she just wanted attention. Jeez. Uh, said that the three white boys were relentlessly bullying her, taking her lunch, called her names, and then yeah, attacked her on the playground. Blah blah blah. Mm -mm. Yeah. Uh, let's see. What do we? And worse is she cut her own hair off. So do you know what? Uh, you know what she got, right? Now what she got? Detention. Dun, dun, dun. I have no idea. No, really. She's an eleven-year-old kid at the time. I have well, no again, idea. these—I mean, these aren't that old. They could all still be in litigation. This one, where the woman arrested for making up a story about Trump, this was in 2018, September. September's a big hate crime. <laughs> Apparently, fake so, hate crime. right? <laughs> so, Long Island, okay, Long Island. This Long Island woman was charged with fabricating a story about a Trump-related hate crime. Officials said the 19-year-old, okay, Adwoa Lewis of Baldwin, told police Friday that she was driving home when a group of four teenagers approached her, yelled, Trump 2016, because that's what teenagers yell. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and oh. stated that she didn't belong here. Uh, Lewis also claimed that after she parked her car in front of her house, she woke up the next day to find... Slash tie. I remember this one, Bay. We did cover this one, where they slashed the slash tires and a note that read "Go home" on the car. <laughs> After an investigation, police found out that, uh, yep, looks like she slashed her own tires. <laughs> She's charged with making up false punish uh, punishable written statement and was released That's, on appearance. It on like that one dude. She got. She had to pay a fine. What what dude? I think it was Chicago. Mm -hmm. 
that uh, messed up his own yeah, car, reported. Keyed his own car. But the camera ring caught him. <laughs> it was all caught on ring camera. One of the neighbors. Mm-hmm. Right. Yeah. Like it was it, a, it, it, well, doing the N-word on the hood of the car, yeah, remember? It, or, it, or, oh, that's, oh, God, I remember that It one. was a BMW. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Unbelievable. Wow. Oh. This one was big back in the day. Tawana Brawley. Uh, Brawley. 1987. Yeah. Like Al Sharpton. Look how big Al Sharpton is there. Yeah, he was. I am outraged. <laughs> yep. Al Sharpton. Uh, Tawana Brawley. Here's what happened with this one. This was uh, fall 1987. I'm guessing September. <laughs> no, it says August. It was, well, it was updated August. Well, this is yeah. uh, this is about uh, she has where she, she had to start paying the people that she accused oh, okay. for defamation. So she had to pay restitution. Wow. Yeah. So in uh, the fall of uh, 1987, Brawley, black girl, was found disheveled inside of a trash bag with racial slaws uh, written across her body. Okay, this was a uh, Wap- uh, Wappinger's uh, Falls, New York. She was 15. She claimed she was kidnapped and repeatedly raped by a group of white men. And also, they smeared feces all over her. Yeah, I was just reading what uh, Julie Jane said in the comments. Oh, what's up, Julie? I wonder what the DNA said about the feces, though. Yeah, very, very good. Survey says it was full of shit. (laughs) Oh, oh. No, no, you got all sorts of DNA in there. No, it it was saying in the comments that it would turn out to be a lie. (laughs) Get it? It was was a bunch of feces. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yep, in in one of the first mainstream uh, cases, activist Al Sharpton became Brawley's spokesperson, staging rallies and calling for justice on her behalf. He got played. When the uh, the case was uh, brought before, oh, he knew. He knew it was fake. He still, it was, this was money for him. So you think it was all he was in on it the whole time? He, no, not in on it, but money. he knew. He only hmm. come around for money, man. In one of his, uh, let's see, uh, yeah. So it ended up being, uh, yeah. Uh, here's what went down. So, if I remember correctly, so, and I kind of feel bad for the kid because her, from what I understand, her stepfather and her mother are, are kind of uh, kind of rough on her. Yeah. So she skipped school, okay. And one of her boyfriends uh, was was came out and said this that uh, yeah she uh, she skipped school and she went to go see someone in prison, right? Mm-hmm. Oh. And may have had a good time while in prison while visiting someone in prison or something like that. Conjugal. So and uh, yeah yeah and so the mom according to the boyfriend the mom and the daughter came up with this excuse or this fake hate crime so that the father wouldn't beat her ass Mm -hmm. did she get like knocked up or something as a result as a result of what being fake raped well the the, i'm just wondering why it would matter i mean just not tell her father like i I was curious if there was a reason that he would have found out about it she was 15 Mm -hmm. at the time yeah going to the prison Mm -hmm. Hmm. i think so (laughs) i know right uh, let's see. What, what, what do we do? That's kind of weird. Yeah, so on the day of her alleged disappearance, Brawley had skipped school to visit her boyfriend, Todd Buxton, who was serving a six-month jail sentence. There it is, yeah. But uh, what, what, they, What's up? They allow that up there? I, I, I don't know. <laughs> when Buxton's mother, okay, with whom she had uh, visited uh, Buxton in jail, urged her to go home before she got in trouble. Well, the girl said, I'm already in trouble. She described how angry her stepdad was over a previous incident of her staying out too late. Neighbors also said that the, they told this to the grand jury that uh, they overheard Glenda Brawley, the mom, mm-hmm. saying to the stepdad, uh, you shouldn't have took the money because after, after it all comes out, they're going to find out the truth. Oh, damn. Took money for what, though? Uh, the media and stuff like that, and, you know. Oh, okay. Mm-hmm. So and this went on for a while, groups. then. Mm-hmm. Oh, the, uh, it wasn't like a Jesse where she got busted in like a week and a half. Another neighbor heard uh, the mom say, they know we're lying, and they're going to find out and come get us. Yep. So, 
Interesting. Yeah, uh, the, the publisher claims that the boyfriend, uh, uh, Broly's uh, Daryl Rodriguez, said that uh, yeah, she had told him the story was fabricated with help from her mother in order to avert wrath uh, from her stepfather, right? <laughs> oh I got a good memory. Yeah. <laughs> she is not here. It's girl <laughs> shit. Mm. Mm -mm. Interesting. <laughs> but uh, yeah, it goes on. Yeah, this one. You know, and uh, and again, it it doesn't matter what race you are. No. If you're reporting fake hate crimes, like like like, look at this lady right here. Okay. And and, and hey, you white people, you're you're not you're not blameless either. I got tons of examples of uh, <laughs> of of you honkies <laughs> doing fake hate crimes. But this one, a, a former uh, student activist, was set up to appear in court this week. Right? Uh, not this week. I'm reading this from uh, April 2020. Allegedly uh, uh, concocting a hate crime hoax to apply for compensation from the California Victim Compens Compensation Board. That's dirty. An Anelali Domin Dominguez Pena, 25-year-old, stands accused of masterminding a series of threats to herself and other students at the University of Laverne in February of 2019 that canceled classes and terrified her classmates. Uh, what did she? What, what did she do? Uh, uh, I don't know. Okay, I mean, eight years in prison. Well, it says faces eight years in prison. Yeah, uh, she was. Uh, she pleaded uh, not guilty. Was released on a hundred thirty-six thousand <laughs> bail. Chris, uh, I prefer the term salty in American. Thank you. Yeah, oh yeah, that's right. That's all right. Not cracker. Sorry. <laughs> but uh, oh, this one was. This one was. This bitch right here. <laughs> I remember this one. Uh, yeah, eating while black. Eating while another black. one. Another one. Stop, stop playing. It's listen. You, you're you're diluting real hate crimes when you do stuff Big like time. that. This one. This was where the uh, the student's allegations said that uh, she was targeted for eating while black at that, a private Massachusetts college. What the hell does that even mean? Okay, you know how liberal Massachusetts is. First of all, okay, and uh, they were deemed unfounded according to an investigation of the incident. Now, uh, Amu Canute. Uh, then a ri uh, rising sophomore at Smith College had claimed that uh, that all she did was be black when a janitor called security on her when he found her in a closed lounge in July 2018. But a 35-page investigation carried out by an outside law firm, no evidence of discrimination. The findings were issued, blah, 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 blah. Uh, the janitor, who was in his 60s and had poor vision, then noticed a figure in the distance eating a closed-off lounge in a lounge area in the in the dorm. Uh, da, da, da. So it doesn't like, sound like she was even really supposed to be no, there. No, no, you weren't supposed to be in there, right? But I guess she she decided to say, "Hey, it's because I'm black." And um, the janitor looks like a female. All right, whatever. <laughs> Um. Oh, this one was a great one. This one right here, um, is she's cute too. Oh God, I like her. Oh, did I just delete it? <laughs> but watch this. Check this. Big, out. Yeah, something went away. Yeah, a, a woman who accused a Texas trooper of a sexual uh, assault. So she gets pulled over for a DUI, right? And th this was a. Uh, yeah, so she gets pulled over for a DUI. And she said that before the officer took her in, that he took her in an alley and went in her. Oh. Right. Of course he did. Okay. And so, and then on this one. So is this the same one or a different one? Uh, this is a different one. Okay, well, this is from 2018. And, uh, yeah, Sharita Dixon Cole she pulled over for a traffic violation around 1.30 a.m. Sunday. Yeah, she was getting naughty late Sunday. <laughs> or early Sunday, I should say. Late Saturday. In Ellis County, okay, and was arrested for driving while intoxicated. She was taken to the Ellis County Jail. Um... And so all of a sudden started uh, Sean King, okay, this activist, claimed on Twitter, okay, the, uh, 
she was arrested because of the trooper didn't like her attitude, blah, blah, blah. A white guy, black girl. Uh, King claimed that the trooper sexually assaulted and threatened to shoot her fiancé who had arrived on the scene. Right, right, all of this. And then... He's wearing a body cam, right? The whole time. Oh, my God. The whole time. <laughs> <laughs> okay, the whole time. Oh, Jesus. So the cop goes, what? When did this happen? <laughs> oh, here. Let me rewind. <laughs> here go my cam. Yeah. Here's four hours of footage. Have fun sifting through it all, all right? I'm, g- I'm taking a break. <laughs> Show me on the tape where I read. Oh, I'm, s- I'm sorry we didn't get a chance to see her. She was cute. But, uh, you know, for a woman of her age. <laughs> Had to throw that in there. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but, yeah, check out this one with this uh, this white kid. Look at that eyeliner. Check out this honky. Um, Saltine I, 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 American. I can, I can use that phrase. I, I, I know one. My best friend's one. <laughs> <laughs> My best friend's white. Mm. So uh, this teen, she ran into this church naked. She pleads guilty to this rape hoax. So a Texas teen ran into a church half naked claiming that she was gang raped, pleaded guilty for what turned out to be an elaborate hoax. Too. Those are just the worst, in my opinion. The rape ones, I mean, come on. Brianna Harmon, 19 years old, agreed to a plea deal for felony charges tampering, and this was 2018 also. Uh, she uh, plea deal for felony charges for of tampering with physical evidence and uh, government documents in connection to a uh, March 2017 incident. Sorry, 2017. Uh, she was remorseful for what she did, blah, blah, blah. Authorities said she filed a fake police report claiming that she had been abducted and raped behind the church in, in Denison, Texas. She was remorseful because she got caught. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> right. Yeah, she showed up uh, at the time. She was 18. She showed up at the local church covered in blood, wearing only a shirt, bra, and underwear. Uh, worshippers told authorities that uh, she claimed three black men took her into the woods and raped her. Well, you know, that's not true. Black guys don't like the woods. <laughs> and they she, don't like skinny white girls. Yeah, yeah. This one's got no booty. Trust me. <laughs> we only mock because she lied. I can say that because I'm... No, I can say that too because I'm a skinny white girl. I could say it too. Are you a skinny white girl? <laughs> I, I identify as one oh, okay. right now. Just check it. Mm-hmm, that's my choice. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so uh, she later told investigators that a black man in a ski mask pinned her down while two others sexually assaulted her. Again, you're diluting actual rape cases. Mm-hmm. You know, the importance of exposing rapists. Harmon was brought to a hospital for an examination where the doctors determined she didn't suffer any injuries consistent with her claims, such as rape. There needs to be harsher penalties. Mm-hmm. Screw this probation and, and community service garbage. If you accuse a man of rape falsely, yeah, you un- need to go to jail. Unable to uh, cooperate her story, authorities uh, confronted Harmon. And she said, all right, I made it up. Just kidding. Freaking disgusting. Just kidding, JK. She told police that uh, she was in a fight with her fiancé that prompted her to go into the woods and cut herself. Afraid of her family's reaction, Harmon said that she didn't correct uh, churchgoers who found her bloody and asked if she was sexually assaulted. Her lawyer said that uh, her unusual personal history... Uh, may have prompted her to stage the hoax. That's a nice way of saying, yeah, she's, she's, she's bad shit crazy. <laughs> <laughs> this guy. How about this dude? Uh, Friendly fire, not immigrant ambush. Two hunters. Texas ranch along the border there mm-hmm. in Mexico. Well, uh, in uh, Presidio County, uh, the, the county sheriff there, Danny Dominguez, he said that a grand jury indicted Michael Bryant and Walker Daughtry on charges of using deadly conta, a conduct by discharging firearms in the directions of others. The charges stem from a January 6th incident. Whoa, January 6th. <laughs> this was in 2017. Where police found Daughtry, 26-year-old, and another hunter, uh, Edwin Roberts, 59, with gunshot wounds. Dominguez says that uh, an investigation found that Daughtry shot Roberts and Bryant shot Daughtry. (laughs) They shot each other? Yeah. (laughs) What the hell for? Investigators believe that the gunfire was sparked when Daughtry 
thought undocumented immigrants were inside the RV that Roberts and his wife were staying and doing the oh, hunting trip. They shot attempting each to other. Cut, yeah, <laughs> hilarious. Attempting to kidnap them. Daughtry allegedly tried to enter the RV, and that's when the shootout began. <laughs> yeah, the OK <laughs> Corral RV. This, this is funny right there. That is so dumbass. Somebody shit. in the RV. There's somebody outside. So Dominguez, uh, the, the sheriff <laughs> there, he said uh, Border Patrol agents found no indication of undocumented workers in the, in the area of the night of the incident. And uh, Dominguez, uh, the, the officer, said that the... Uh, uh, the hunters may have uh, been paranoid over the threat of possible cross-border violence. <laughs> By the looks of it right now, we believe the shooting and doing the shooting, uh, they shot each other. They didn't speak out. Get them! Get those whack backs! <laughs> bang, bang, I'm a hit! Me too! I think it went more like, you son of a bitch, you shot me, I'm going to shoot you back. A GoFundMe page uh, was set up uh, for the medical expenses. Did they mm -hmm. set one up for each other? Mm -hmm. They got about 20 grand. <laughs> oh, get the hell out of here. Yeah. Mm, mm, mm. Yeah, he wrote uh, the attack was another reason why a wall must be built along the border. Oh boy! Oh my God! <laughs> mm. Maybe a few less Miller lights before you hit the crazy. Mm. How about this one? This firefighter guy. Okay, he's. It looks like he set his own house on fire and blamed it on. Uh, blamed it on Black Lives Matter. <laughs> aye, aye, aye. <laughs> well, that's two thousand sixteen. Being a being him. Uh, Binghampton, New York, a firefighter is accused of setting a, setting fire to his own home and attempting to shift blame by writing anti-police graffiti on the house. 41-year-old Jason Stokes pleaded not guilty of arson on Tuesday. Uh, yeah, the uh, da, 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 Stokes who allegedly placed full gas cans and other containers of flammable material throughout the home, essentially creating an obstacle course. Uh, they described the home as appearing to have been booby-trapped, creating a hazardous situation for the family and other firefighters who responded. The house reportedly had a Blue Lives Matter flag flying out front and um, message, a message that read, Lie with pigs, fry like bacon. Jesus was he, found on the house. He's a firefighter. You'd think if anybody would know how to successfully get away with arson, it'd be a damn firefighter, right? Right. <laughs> Soaks was charged with uh, second-degree arson. And, uh, you know, it was interesting how this case ended, though, if I remember correctly. This was... Uh, let me see if I got it in here. Yeah, this is uh, Stokes, right? Yeah. Where is Jay, it? Was it Jason Stokes? Yeah, Jason Stokes. There it is, okay. Yeah, August 2016, former firefighter Jason Stokes, okay. Blah, 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 police judge Stokes with arson, concluding that he had set fire himself and written the offending message to cover up his crime, probably in his handwriting. Also <laughs> had booby trapped a house to hinder investigation. A jury acquitted Stokes on uh, May 15, 2017, uh, agreeing that it was arson, but not finding enough evidence to convict Stro uh, uh, Stokes. Yeah, you gotta, be, you gotta be tougher on these fake hate crimes. Seriously. They're just gonna keep happening. Because, yeah, it allows people to be like, all right, I'll, I'll, I'll take the slap on the wrist. Like you've said a million times, like we all have, it takes away from the real ones, and it's like the boy who cried wolf. Yeah, like this lady, the Massachusetts cop who faked a uh, home invasion, okay, and blamed the Black Lives Matter activists on this one, too. Listen, I don't like BLM. Uh, it's a Marxist organization, mm -hmm. but I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna stage something and, and say, BLM did it. No. <laughs> It's, it's stupid. You're well, it's, it's also giving them attention, undue attention. Right, right. You're helping their cause. Because, because negative attention is better than none at all. Yeah, because you're going to get found out that you're lying. Yeah, it makes them look better. Yeah. Unbelievable. Sick, sick people. I mean, this one with the bus. This one on the bus saying that, uh, you know, oh, yeah, they said all these bad words, uh, these uh, N-word and uh, spick and span. I'm talking about the detergent of the cleaning company. <laughs> right. And it's all, all on this bus. And then, oh, oh, yeah. And then they're like, well, okay, let's go to the footage. That took me a minute. Let's go to the footage. <laughs> oh, spick and span? <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, and the Duke. Do you remember the, the Duke rape Duke accusation? Duke yeah. Okay. Yeah, I remember oh, that. Oh, like these guys right here. Like this uh, Duke lacrosse accuser suing for defamation after the media reported that she fatally stabbed her boyfriend. She was convicted of, oh. Uh, da, Second da, da. degree murder. Yeah, th I guess this is, is this a different story? 
But no, there's these guys that went to Duke and they were accused of uh, rape. And uh, again, you know, the, the school got rid of them and everything. And yeah. they're like, what are you doing? Oh, that's a big deal. I mean, that's Duke. Come on. Ivy League. Unreal. All right. Moral of the story. Stop, stop, stop hating and stop fake hating. All right. <laughs> stop <laughs> fake hating. Stop all of the above. Yeah. If you're going to hate, do real hate. Right. No, no, don't, 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 <laughs> no. Don't, don't hate masturbate. Don't listen to Joe. <laughs> all right. What's up, Chris? How you doing, Chris? Early. Uh, man, we went long. All right. Let's. Yeah. 